child benefit is the topic. Now, child benefit is, uh, well, there's been some changes for this tax year, so we need to be aware of what they are. Quite big ones, actually. So I'm going to outline those for you. But child benefit actually has been around for donkey's years. Where does that phrase come from, by the way, donkey's years? Anyway, my mum used to get it, and I always remember my mum. And I'll show you a photograph of um, the, the book that she used to have. Here's a, a, a family allowances book that she would have. And she'd go down to the post office every week and cash in the family allowance book and, and get all her money from cash from the post office. It's known as family allowance. And I remember her going down to the post office getting the money because that night we used to eat well. <laughs> Which is crazy, really, when you think about it. But family allowance has been around for a long, long time. And it's designed for families, people who have children. Because the government have always encouraged us to have lots of babies. Because if you have lots of babies, it helps the economy grow, etc., etc. So therefore, it costs money to have babies, so they would give you some benefit for that. So let's have a quick look at the rules, very, very briefly for you, so we're comfortable with, with those. So I've just dug out... Um, the, the BBC websites and um, clicked on that. Oh, it's quite good information there, actually. So um, who's eligible for child benefit and how much is it worth? Well, you can get child benefit if you're responsible for bringing up a child who's under 16, okay, or under 20 if they're in approved education or training. Only one person can claim child benefit for a child. There's no limit to how many children you can claim for. <laughs> it's quite interesting, isn't it? Um, from April 24, yeah, there's the figures there for you. £25.60 for the first child and then 16.95 for um, for younger children. So it it adds up, there's no doubt about it. It adds up according to how many kids you've got. And um, I think it's a good thing. Obviously it's a benefit, so it's not like a loan or anything like that. So you get given to it by, by the government. But the interesting thing there is only one person can claim it. And that's where it gets a little bit complicated because the person who claims the child benefit is could be the mother or father doesn't make a difference but the person who claims it is the person who's going to obviously receive it but they're the, more importantly the person who's going to get the Nash insurance stamp for that year my mum used to call it a stamp I said back in those days he probably used to stamp it didn't they but so the person who claims it gets a NI record for the year which means towards their state pension they see because state pension of course requires you have so many years national insurance credits so that's an important thing so you should always claim it even if you don't actually ask it to be paid to you which seems a bit odd why would you do that but you want to get your national insurance so the problem of course is that child benefit costs money and the government of course have been cutting back on benefits over the last few years which you know they're entitled to do and in 2013, they made a big change to it and they brought in this um, earnings threshold. Um, so it's gone now. Well, the numbers have changed. I just want to give you an idea what this. The earnings threshold used to be £50,000. And what that meant is if you were earning fifty grand, if any one of the parents in the household was earning more than fifty grand, then you started to lose it. And it uh, peaked itself at sixty, and at 60000 you didn't get any at all. So it was like a taper going on there as well. So what would happen is that you would claim your child benefit and, and get it. But if there was somebody in the household who earned in that tax year more than £50,000, and of course it capped at £60,000, then they would gradually lose their child benefit and um, get none at all above £60,000. Now, it was argued as a bit unfair, really, because it, um, it didn't take into account joint salaries. It just took into account the fact that if one person had an income above 50, and it didn't need to be the person who was claiming it, of course. So, OK, you could argue the politics of that. But um, that caused a problem because people would claim it. And, and then, of course, they didn't know what their income was that tax year. You? But at the end of the tax year, you then had to have it paid back <laughs> because you filled in the tax return then you'd have to have your tax coding adjusted for the following year. And they called that the, it's the first acronym for you. And I'll, call, I'll give it the, the full figure for you. The high income, there you go, child benefit charge. Here you go, child benefit charge. There you go. 
That's a hell of a thing, isn't it? A high income child benefit charge. We're getting far too many acronyms, aren't we, in this business of ours? You know, the, the hick a bit buzz <laughs> kind of thing. But that basically was the fact is, you know, if you earned more than that money, you used to have to do your tax return and then you'd have to pay it back, high income child benefit charge. Now, that's all changing from this tax year. So let's um, give you the, the details from 2024. So uh, 24 to 25 onwards is changing. Um, changing for the better, I suppose, in a way, because what they've done now, they've increased the thresholds. So rather than the 50,000 minimum, you've got uh, the thresholds come to 60, 60,000, and then you lose it completely when you're earning more than 80. So that's that's how it's working. You don't need to work know how they adjust it, they just do. And that's the issue, you see. Now it's actually going to change even further for so from 26, 27, get the right dates there for you. And they have to go through a lot of consultation for this because it takes a bit of time. They're going to make it a household basis. So at the moment it's just one salary, one one person's income. But from 26 to 27, it's going to be based around a household. So what they'll probably do there is take a look at the joint income and see where that takes them. Anyway, will you get tested in the exam on this? You might do, yeah, depending on what you're doing, of course. You might get tested. They won't ask you to work out the numbers, but they might ask you for these figures or, or the fact it is kind of means tested in a certain kind of way. But I'm more interested in the opportunities for mortgage and protection advisors and financial advisors that this brings in. Now, the big opportunity for financial advisors specifically, or for your, if you're a mortgage and protection advisor and you're referring your business on to financial advisors, is that this, this income threshold that we got here isn't actually your um, salary as such. It's all your income, of course it is. But what they actually use is what they call the adjusted net income. So let's write that down over here. Let's give that here adjusted now the adjusted net income is what they use at the end of the tax year and they correlate that against these figures now the adjusted net income is your income from all sources of course less a few uh, deductions and the big one of course is pension contributions so that's the opportunity isn't it because your adjusted net income would be your income less pension contributions. So if you're making payments into a pension, a workplace pension, for example, or you've got your own pension, a SIP, for example, like I use, then all you need to do, if you can afford it, of course, is make extra contributions to your pension for the, for the year in question, and that will reduce your adjusted net income, which is the figure they use for these thresholds. So if one of you is earning, I know, 65,000, for example, and you know that's what you're gonna earn in that tax year, what you do is you make payments to your pension of what say five thousand six thousand pounds per annum which therefore reduces your adjusted net income which will actually mean you won't have to pay any back of your of your child benefit so that's a good advantage i think obviously there's more to it than that and good financial advisors have got great software that works all out for you and the providers of course will do it for you as well they've got websites so you can just key in the numbers and work out the tax saving but it's worth thinking about isn't it um, you can um, opt out of child benefit completely you can just say i don't I, we don't need it we don't want it just opt out of it which is fine and dandy but usually the best thing to do if one of the a parents is not earning that year is to get him or her to um, claim it uh, so that they get their national insurance stamp of course but not actually to receive it you don't have to receive child benefit and then of course you don't have to pay it back do you so you can certainly do that as well because the problem is if you don't do it in the end of the tax year you've got to do your tax return and you have to pay it back so which is not always a good thing as well so it's always good to register to get the national insurance credit if you're not earning and paying national insurance that year so yeah, you might get a few questions on that one. Definitely on the high income child benefit charge, how it works is a key one. And um, obviously a couple of years time, it will change the household. So that's um, child benefit and long may it live as well because the number of babies that we're having in this country at the moment is falling. Apparently it's its lowest level ever. Is it 1.2 babies per couple or something like that? 
and it means that our population isn't growing anymore. It's starting to stagnate, which you know might not be a bad thing to say. Look at it, but the, the fewer younger people you have in the economy, the less younger people there are to pay for the state pensions of all the people who have retired. So you've got to balance things out. So I think to help people to have babies, because believe me, I've had four of them and they're very, very expensive things to have babies. But of course they give you a legacy for life as well, so what the hell, isn't it? Their end of child benefit has been useful. <laughs>